What up, Dungeon Squad? Cruz Ramos with Dungeon Boxing Club here. And today I have my son Christian with me, and we're gonna be going over how I like to use the punch mitts here at Dungeon Boxing Club. So stick around, you don't wanna miss out. So I believe learning to use or using the punch mitts is crucial to any boxing regimen, whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced fighter, because the mitts is what's gonna help your fighter uh, better their accuracy, better their speed, better their power, better their punching combinations, really every aspect of your boxing game. So for the purpose of this video here, we're gonna look at it as if you're a beginner fighter or a beginner trainer. So you wanna learn how to use these mitts. Um, I know going to a boxing gym can get rather expensive, finding a trainer to help you out can get rather expensive, and really you don't need nothing more than a willingness to learn, a passion for the sport, and a friend that's willing to join you in this journey. So we're going to look at using the mitts uh, from a beginner's perspective, and there's three things that I like to look at when I'm using the mitts here at Dungeon Boxing Club. The first thing I always look at is the placement of my hands. The second thing I like to look at is what my fighter's body is doing while he's or her, he or her is hitting the mitts. And the third thing I like to work on is the variety of punches that we are working on during our mitt session. So let's go ahead and take a look at all three of these categories. So the first thing you want to focus on is the placement of your hands or where you're setting up the targets for your fighter. Now, when I'm in the ring and I'm practicing mitts with my fighters, I want it to look very close to them actually being in a fight. I want it to feel that way for them. So when they're shooting those punches, they're actually aiming for a target that they would hit inside the ring. So if we're working on some headshots, I want to set up those mitts pretty close to my face here so that they, when, they throw his, when he throws his shots, in his mind, it feels like he's actually hitting his opponent in the head. So you gotta be careful not to open those, those mitts too wide. It makes it very unrealistic, because if you're holding the mitts, and I'm gonna use this as an example, because I see this from a lot of um, beginning trainers or beginning boxers that are just getting into it, where they hold the mitts really wide open like that, and really that's unrealistic because, for one, your opponent's head isn't gonna be doing this in the ring, right? Most of the time, they're gonna to try to stay here in the middle, so you wanna get the precision down by having your fighter throw those punches closer to the head. So we're gonna take a look at what that looks like, okay? So first, what I'm gonna show here is it, the incorrect way, and then I'm gonna show you the way I like to do it here at Dungeon Boxing Club. So I'm gonna hold the mitts really wide here, okay? And Chris is gonna go ahead and throw a one, two. Okay, one more time. See, it's very unnatural to him, and he's having to exert a lot of different, a lot of strength and energy just to overextend to reach those punches. And like I said, your opponent's not doing all of this in the ring, so you, you don't want your fighter to develop a habit of throwing those wide open punches. You want him to be precise right down the middle. That way it simulates actually hitting the head, hitting your target when in the ring. So here's what I like to do. I like to keep it close to my head. Okay, go ahead, one, two. Good, one more time. Good, one more time. Real close, so in his mind, it looks like he's actually going for a head, and then when he gets in there and actually practices this during sparring, or he goes into an actual fight, he's shooting for that head properly. Another thing you wanna be careful with is you wanna make sure that you're slightly catching those punches. Now with a lot of beginner fighters, and the first time on the mitts, what they're gonna to try to do is they're gonna come at you with haymakers. Haymakers, because they want to show you as their trainer or their friend that they are strong, they're tough, and they can throw hard punches. So the first thing you got to do is slow them down, get them to calm down, and then you want to make sure you're slightly catching those punches as your fighter is throwing them. Because if I leave my hand in this position here without movement, and Chris happens to throw a big jab, what's going to happen, it's going to throw my hand back, and it's going to end up hurting my elbow and hurting my wrist. So you want to slightly catch those punches. I'm going to demonstrate what that looks like. All right, one, two, good, one, good, one, good. So it's just a real slight catch, real fast, nothing drastic. So be careful that you're not throwing those, punch, those catches all the way down here because then your fighter develops a habit of throwing half punches. There's no power in that and it's just not beneficial to your fighter. So you just want to do just a slight catch and not go all the way down. And here's what it looks like doing it the incorrect way, okay? Good. Good, good. And actually, as we're doing that, 
not only is he not throwing his punch to its full potential, but it's honestly, it's hurting my hands. It's hurting my elbow because I'm forcing that down that mitt onto his punch. So you just want to do a quick catch, just enough so that you're not injuring your wrist and elbows. Once again, one, two. Good, again. One more time. Good. Now the second thing I like to focus on as a trainer or a mitt holder is I want to be 100% aware of everything my fighter's body is doing while he's hitting these mitts. I want to make sure that he's turning the hips properly. I want to make sure that he's fully extending those punches. I want to make sure he's putting his shoulder in that jab. So it is my job to see everything that he's doing. That way I can correct whatever he's not doing properly or we can enhance and work on the things that he is doing properly. Another Another thing you want to do that, why reason why you want to do that, especially with your beginner fighters, is because once you get in there and they start hitting those mitts, you can then begin to develop a game plan as to what you need to work on with this particular fighter. Maybe as you're hitting the mitts, you notice that they're not moving their head or they're not turning the hips or their footwork, they're stumbling, crossing their legs. So as you begin to work these mitts with them, you can start developing a game plan as to what you need to work on with this fighter. So you have to be 100% aware of everything that that your fighter is doing. So we're gonna do just a quick little mitts. I'm gonna just use basic punches, one, two, one, two, threes. But at the same time, I'm gonna be watching everything he's doing with his shoulders, everything he's doing with his hips, and while his arms at full extension. I'm gonna make sure and see everything he's doing so that I can help him improve his boxing game. All right, so let's go ahead and work a little bit here. One, good, good. One, two, good, good. One, two, good, good. Give me that jab. Nice, one more time. Good, good. Two, good, two, three, two. Good, make sure you're turning that hook, right? You wanna turn that foot okay. with, the, with the left hook, yeah. Make sure you're turning that foot, okay? Let's try that. There you go, that was much better. One more time. Good, okay, give me a jab. Good, one, two. Just like that, good. And as you notice, I did, I did ask him to correct one thing there with his, with his left hook. So you wouldn't normally see that if you're just focusing on the punches. If you just wanted to see hard punches, you wouldn't see that he needed to correct that left hook. So you want to keep an eye out on everything that your fighter is doing while you're holding the punch mitts. And the third thing I like to focus on when I'm working mitts with my fighters is the variety of punches we're working on, where the variety of punches that I'm trying to do with my fighter. Now, it just kind of depends on what kind of game plan you have with your fighter. You know, if you're working on speed, you're going to use kind of a different set of punches. If you're working on power, you're going to use a different set of punches. But it's really up to what you're trying to work on. Now, if you're just starting out, I would encourage you to start with individual punches just to get you going. And what you're looking for is you're looking for all the proper techniques technique in one punch at a time. Once you get the proper technique throwing one punch at a time, then you can start getting into the fancier stuff or the larger combinations. So we're going to work on that here. We're just going to throw one punch at a time. Uh, we're going to work a jab. We're going to work a straight right. I'm going to have him throw some uppercuts. And while he's doing those punches, I'm keeping an eye on making sure he's fully extending those punches, making sure he's putting the shoulders into those punches, and more importantly, that he's utilizing his hips to generate the power needed in each one of those punches. So we're gonna work on just one punch at a time, and this is something I encourage you to do with all your beginner fighters, okay? So let's work on the jab. Good, good, one more time. Nice, again, good. Make sure you're turning that hip a little bit to get that power, and snap that jab a little bit. There it is. One more time. Okay, let's work on that right hand now. Make sure you're turning the hip, all right. There it is, a little faster. Good, make sure it comes right back. Nice, all right, let's work on the right uppercut. All right, get under your opponent. Good job, one more time. One more time. Good, okay, let's work on that left hook, same thing. I mean, uh, left uh, uppercut, you wanna get under your opponent, use that hip to generate the power. Nice. Okay. And last, let's work on that left hook, all right? Remember, we want to turn that foot, all right, to generate all the proper power. Here we go. Nice. One more time. Good, good. So you got to have a game plan as to what you're trying to accomplish. I would encourage that you work on each individual punch first, 
and then you start getting into combinations. So now that I feel comfortable with Chris with each individual punch that he's thrown, so I'm gonna start increasing the volume so I can begin to work on his speed and accuracy while throwing combinations. So we're gonna do a little more mitt work here and I'm gonna be having him throw maybe two or three punch combinations this time. Because now, now that we got through the individual punches, I'm comfortable, I think he's ready for a little bit more. So here's what that looks like. Okay, <clears throat> one, two. One, two, three. Nice. Okay. Two, three, two. Good. Six, three, two. One more time. Good, good. One. Double that up. Good, good. Six, three. Good. Two, three, two. There you go. And as you get more and more comfortable, your fighter gets more and more comfortable with those punches, Start adding more, start adding more. Now you notice I am calling out the punch combinations and the reason why I do that with my fighters is because I want them to think quickly. So I want them to think quickly every time I call out a combination. And that's really it, Dungeon Squad. These are just a few of the principles that I like to work on when working on the mitts here at Dungeon Boxing Club. Like I said, you don't need to go to some fancy club. All you need is a pair of mitts, a friend that's willing to help you, and a passion to learn the sport of boxing. I hope this video was informative for you. Once again, if you guys have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop that down in the comment box. I, I, I respond to everybody because I do value your time and I value your knowledge as well. Thank you so much, Dungeon Squad. We'll catch you guys on the next one.